Hi friends, today we will look at the answer for question number 29 that I gave yesterday. So hope you are preparing well for the prelims. However, you can spend some 10 minutes in writing the main answers so that you will not lose touch with the main answer writing practice. The question 29 I gave yesterday was regarding India Bangladesh. Read the question carefully. It's a 15 marks question from GS paper 2 International Relations. The question says, though India Bangladesh relations are touted to be one of the best in South Asia, there are some irritants that have developed recently because of which some perceive that Bangladesh is turning towards China. So if you observe carefully, there are three parts of the question. One part is, why do you think India-Bangladesh relations are one of the best relations in South Asia? Second part is, what are the irritants that are developing recently between India-Bangladesh? Third part is, do you think Bangladesh is turning towards China recently? So these are the three parts of the question that you have to address. Generally, uh, how do the evaluators give marks. Observe carefully. In these kind of questions, some two end of marks will be given for addressing all the three aspects. For example, I have I told you in the question they are asking you three things. Whether you have addressed all the parts of the question or not. Some two end of marks uh, are given to that one. Second thing is, are you addressing all the issues between India and Bangladesh? As is the question between India and Bangladesh, whether you are addressing the TISA issue, the border dispute issue, the northeastern issue means various important issues are you covering them or not that carries around two and a half marks and then finally as a discussion based question we have to bring out your opinions give some suggestions and they'll also look at what are the stand that you are taking means they, they'll test your uh, opinion opinionated answer so around some two and a half marks will be given for that so but the Pro, the mistake that co students commonly do in these kind of questions is that, for example, when I evaluate these kind of questions, most of the students will just focus on second aspect. What they'll do is some students will put side heading of the ISTA, write something. Then they'll put side heading of Northeastern issue. Then the Constitutional Amendment, Citizenship Amendment Act. Then, you know, NRC issue. So they will address all the issues of India, Bangladesh. And they will think that they have addressed the question very well. They feel that they will get very good marks, but I would give them only three marks because that is just one part of the question. You understand? So uh, you be careful when addressing these kind of questions. Come to the answer. I would suggest you that in this kind of question, you start introduction. You write, you write introduction historically. For example, as Bangladesh formed in 1971, write something regarding history. You can say that. In the 1971 Bangladesh Liberation War, India has supported. You can also say that as soon as Bangladesh formed into a new country, India is one of the first countries to recognize Bangladesh and to establish diplomatic relationship. And in fact, India, Bang for India, among all the South Asian countries, Bangladesh is the biggest trading partner. Even for Bangladesh, India is the biggest trading partner. So this kind of introduction of two to three lines you can write. Now come to the first part of the question. Why do you think India Bangladesh relation is touted as one of the best relation in the South Asian countries? You can say that from 2009, in 2009, as the new government, the Sheikh Hasina government, Awami, Awami League party, when it came to the power, from then the relationship between India and Bangladesh became extremely strong. Several issues which were not solved from several years were solved after 2009. You can tell some of those issues. You can say that. In the land border dispute, India has given away almost 10,000 acres to Bangladesh to settle the dispute for once and ever. Even in the maritime dispute, for example, the United Nations Tribunal has awarded almost out of 25,000 square kilometers, almost 20,000 square kilometers have been given to Bangladesh and India accepted it. So observe carefully. United Nation, Nation Tribunal's award can be denied. For example, China denied, denied the United Nations Tribunal award in the South China Sea. But India did not deny uh, this award. Though it is unfavorable for India, India accepted it because India is looking for a long-term, sustainable, good relationship with Bangladesh. Now, see, these two are what we can say India has done a good thing for Bangladesh. 
But now let us come to see what Bangladesh has done to India. For example, in the northeastern states of India, the insurgency was high right from the independence time. And several insurgents and the top leaders who were operating in northeast India have training camps in Bangladesh. And after 2009, most of the training camps were closed by the Bangladesh government. And Bangladesh handed over some of these insurgents to India. Most well-known names are, you know, Anup Chetia, Anup Chetia of Ulfa, the Ulfa, has been handed over to India. Even Ranjan Dalmaria, Ranjan Dalmaria has been, he was the head of one of the Bodoland fonts. He has been handed over by Bangladesh to India. In that aspect, you know, India got a good favor from Bangladesh. Even recently, the transshipment facility, as you know, you can draw a map if required very quickly here. But in the map, be careful of drawing Bangladesh map very well. Bangladesh map very well. Like this, okay. So, see, uh, in India wants to move the, the goods, cargo, from mainland to the northeastern state of Tripura. So, there they want to use the Chittagong port of Bangladesh and Bangladesh accepted it, or the Mongla port. Chittagong port or even the Mongla port. Bangladesh accepted it. And this actually made the transportation easy. So it has reduced the cost of, you know, turning all the way on the land, directly use the sea route, the land route. Even, it was a good thing. Generally, most countries don't accept that, but Bangladesh accepted that. Even for Tripura, the drinking water, the drinking water is a big problematic issue for people in Tripura. And Bangladesh accepted to provide the water from Feni River to the people of Tripura. Now coming to India again, India actually provided the coastal, Coastal surveillance radar system. India has provided already for Seychelles, Mauritius, Maldives, now to Bangladesh. So, in that way, the relationship is very good. In fact, I can tell you 10 more issues, but not required because in 250 mocks answer, I mean in 15 mocks answer, as there are three parts, almost like five mocks to each part, so you have to write only one page on each part. So, write the major issues and stop it there. Don't write, write all the issues that you know. Come to the second part of the question. What are the major irritants? There may be several minor irritants, but focus on the major irritants. For example, some of the Bangladeshi commentators actually feel that whatever Bangladesh is doing for India, the good gestures of Bangladesh towards India has not been written back. That means India is actually not focusing as much as Bangladesh is helping India. So let us look at some of the issues. One is Tisa. The Tisa river water issue is unresolved, is not resolved uh, till today. But here the problem is river water is a state subject in India, state subject. And without the cooperation of West Bengal government, India can never resolve it. Another problem, another intent is the National Register of Citizens in Assam actually, you know, uh, denies several people of, uh, several uh, illegal migrants of Assam as citizens of India and they want to send them back to Bangladesh and Bangladesh is not ready for it. Even the Citizenship Amendment Act is not actually uh, comfortable for Bangladesh. This is a major irritant. Even the lines of cut, lines of you know credit. For example, India promised several lines of credit, but uh, could not implement most of them. There is irritant. Even the Rohingya Muslims issue. In fact, India has good relations with Myanmar, so Bangladesh is asking India to talk to Myanmar and take back all the Rohingya Muslims. But India's stand is different on that issue. So these are the major irritants. No need to explain the irritants clearly. Just mention them and leave it. The third part of the question. The question is saying that is Bangladesh turning towards China? Is it true? See, here you have to take a stand. Either you can say Bangladesh turning towards China or you can say it's not the issue. For example, I would take a stand by saying that uh, we should not consider this as annoyance towards India. We should consider this as Bangladesh wanting economic favor from China. As Bangladesh, you know, is ruling under economic problems, it definitely requires a country like China which has got deep pockets which can help Bangladesh, okay. Also, you can say that, for example, because of not resolving the Tista water issue, actually, the, the water from Tista river goes to northern Bangladesh, and northern Bangladesh is called Granary of Bangladesh. It really requires the Tista water. But as it is not provided by India, Bangladesh is trying to build reservoir there, alternate arrangements, reservoir there, and for that, China is helping. China promised to give almost $1 billion for that. So definitely it's a good thing that China has done to Bangladesh. We have to accept that one. Also, 
look at the arms supplies almost 2 billion dollars of arms are supplied from china to bangladesh which accounts to 75 percent of overall arms of bangladesh even investing for example china is investing heavily in the bangladesh infrastructure and power sector so of course because it has deep pockets but india though india is not economically as powerful as china india can still help bangladesh within the limited capacity of our economic power see bangladesh is trying to balance the relationship between india and china but they are not turning their back towards india that we should identify here also most of the projects in Bangladesh are not accepted if they are sensitive to India's mis if they are against India's security Bangladesh is showing sensitivity we have to accept that so as far as uh, uh, I am concerned Bangladesh is maintaining good relations with India and how do you conclude this question uh, my suggestion is you conclude just by writing some suggestions what India has to do you can say that India has to follow a proactive policy because Bangladesh is a smaller country, we should be more proactive. For example, due to the COVID-19 crisis, we have to accept that the, the government of Bangladesh is under, under pressure from the deep state. Deep state means the police, the bureaucracy, the army of Bangladesh are actually forcing Bangladesh to take economic help from China. And definitely, there is no other way for Bangladesh. And now this is the time when India also can help Bangladesh in providing the daily use commodities. Of course, they are providing. In fact, India is helping Bangladesh to really good extent during the COVID-19 crisis but still we have to enhance it. Also we should be careful that China and Pakistan will try to take Bangladesh away from India. Not only Bangladesh, all South Asian countries they want to take them away from India. But clearly for example Pakistan is trying to convince Bangladesh about, uh, the, about the bad intentions of India in abolishing Article 373. Also we should see uh, that lines of credit promised to Bangladesh shall be implemented. In this way, you can conclude the answer for this question. Friends, the question for tomorrow is regarding is from General Service Paper 3, Disaster Management. I prepared this question from National Disaster Management Authorities Guidelines on the Flood Management. So, uh, write this question in around 12 minutes. See you. Bye.